I'm Kerry Fink with Helping Seniors Updates. And on behalf of uh, Joe Steckler, our president and founder, and Kim Bernard, our education specialist, and the entire Helping Seniors crew, welcome to Helping Seniors Update. Today is Wednesday, August the 5th. And uh, I have the privilege of having with us uh, not only a great friend of Helping Seniors, but uh, she's actually on the board of Helping Seniors, helps, helps us navigate all the things we're doing. It's Ruth Rhodes with Rhodes Law. Hey, Ruth, how are you today? Good morning, Carrie. I'm doing really well. I'm working at the office, um, trying to be socially distant like all of us. And uh, it's been crazy, I gotta say. A lot, uh, lot of learning curves, for sure. You know, as soon as I said, here we are on August 5th, I keep, I keep thinking it's like, this has been an unusual year, I know, for everybody, but it seems like it just started, and I'm trying to figure out where seven months of the year already moved through. I know. It's been like a whirlwind. Um, I describe every day like a machine gun fire. It, it just feels like, you know, at, at the end of the day, I've had so many things come at me from different directions and regular life, of course. And then all these uh, changes that we're all having to deal with, with, uh, you know, doing the social distancing and keeping each other safe. And, and there's a lot, there's a lot to consider and a lot going on. That's for sure. There's no doubt about it. You know, we were talking, I was talking both with Kim on Monday uh, on Helping Seniors Updates and then on last Friday with Joe. Uh, and there is there is just a lot going on. And yet you guys in the legal business, you're considered an essential business. So even when they were telling us we had to shut down and stay at home for 30 days and slow the spread and all that, you guys were still having to reinvent and find a way to, to, to keep it all moving. Yes, um, and thankfully, um, I've always been kind of a nerdy kind of person and always kind of trying to figure out the latest and greatest on technology. So we, we had a little bit of that ready to go already, but uh, what we ended up having to do is I did close my office partially uh, by sending um, all of my paralegals and assistants home, except for one assistant and me. We kept the doors open the entire time. Uh, but during that that situation where everybody was working at home, we were trying to figure out how to get cameras to work and videos to work and how do I make sure they have access to the servers and just, and how do I get them to answer the phone when the phone rings when they're at home, you know? So it's been a lot of fun, <laughs> so, <laughs> but I got to say, and, and I'm not trying to make a plug for these folks, but they stood by me. Uh, it's Morris Communications. They're a local business here. They helped me figure out how to let everyone at home be able to work as if they were at their desktop here at the office. And they helped me figure out how they can answer the phones at home. And it's been, it's been a lot, I got to say, stressful for me because I'm not only being the lawyer and practicing law and trying to help my clients and but then I'm also like the IT tech and <laughs> the phone tech and you know it's it's been a lot but you know uh, now we're all set up and I still have three full-time paralegals working at home I have one full-time paralegal that came back to the office so I have one here all the time now um, I have two full-time administrative assistants here at the office as well, plus I am as well. And we still are opening and having our, our we have a satellite office at one senior place, and uh, we have a full-time paralegal working up there as well. Awesome. So things are not normal. I don't want to say that because it's not normal, but things are getting to like a new normal. Like we're, we're starting to kind of, ease into it and it's starting to feel like we can do this and and I don't know I know you guys have been doing a great job really trying to help everyone and get the information out and continue providing the information that's so critical and I know that on my end I've been trying to do the same thing been doing a lot of webinars and yes. trying to post things on Facebook and uh, provide as much information as can oh and I didn't tell you I have two uh, documents for free for anyone who wants them or asks for them uh, available on my website. Um, so it's the healthcare surrogate document and the living will. And I know we're going to be talking about these things later. So as we go on, I'll explain more about what they are, but I have those for free for anyone who wants them. All they have to do is log in to our website. 
and I can give that website if you want. But please, I was going to say, I was going to ask you for two things. Would you share the phone number for your office and would you share the website? Because uh, as people are looking at this and getting a, an insight, and we're going to talk a little bit, we wrote down a topic that we wanted to, to at least hit some highlights on called the state planning today. And I know you have been doing uh, to keep folks informed oh, yeah. and going through this, you've been doing a serious number of webinars and I want people to be able to figure out how they can uh, access uh, as you guys are doing those. So yes, please. Sure. Um, so obviously um, in case I, I, you might've said it, but the name of our law firm is Rhodes Law PA. And um, we have two locations. One's on Sarno Road in Melbourne and one's in Vieira um, at one senior place. We have a, a, a website that has a lot of information and it's free to whoever wants to look at it. We have all our webinars posted and our website is www.roadslawpa.com and I'll spell that because people always get my name wrong. All right, so it's Rhodes Law PA, R-H-O-D as in David, E-S as in Sam, L A W P as in Paul A dot com. And when you get on the website, you just navigate over to the education page. That's where we have all the gold. Uh, we have we have our webinars that we've taped and, and try to keep recording and have available so that it can be watched over and over um, as needed. Also on that same page is where you can request that free designation of healthcare surrogate and your free uh, living will. And the reason why we picked those two documents in particular is because per statute, you are not required to have a notary. So I wanted to make it easy. So all you have to do is you can download it. We will send you a link to download it. You print it. You will need two witnesses. Uh, and we give you instructions on who those witnesses can be or who they can't be. So we, we want to make sure you do it right. And um, like, again, I would have provided other documents, but other documents re require notaries. And the whole thing I'm trying to do here is just help people where I can without making them have to go anywhere. Um, so those are the two documents that we do that don't require a notary, even though if we draft them for you, we will notarize them as well. Um, and on that topic, uh, I, before I move on, I want to give you my phone number though. Yes. Okay. So uh, our phone number is 321-610-4542. That's 321-610-4542. Um, and as far as uh, going into like, how do we protect each other? And, and I know this is really current. We really need to know uh, this information. Um, at our office, as always, we're still providing free consultations, uh, but we're not doing it in person generally. In fact, I haven't had a face-to-face -face consultation since probably March. Um, so all of our consultations now are done either over the telephone or for our folks that are a little bit more savvy, uh, we can do uh, the video conferencing. So we have uh, all sorts of gadgets to use and, and different software programs to use that are um, easy to use on your smartphone. You don't even need to have a computer. So yeah. um, kind of like Zoom, uh, which is what we're using. Right. Um, but what we are doing is we're doing our free telephone conferences, our free video conferences. And if you need us to draft documents for you, um, there's a couple of ways that we can do it. We have a notary who went through the special training mm -hmm. so that she can notarize over the video right. uh, remote. And that, and that requires special training. I know there are some notaries that are, are doing uh, remote uh, notarization when they don't have that special training and so that could cause problems later on so if you're getting remote notarization done just make sure that the notary has had the special training and has that special um, uh, licensing so to speak uh, with the state so uh, we do have that with our office um, but for folks that are local and, and don't want to do the remote notarization we are signing 
documents at our office, but we're doing it outside. Right. So uh, they stay in their car. We have a big, beautiful oak tree out front. <laughs> we just park them under the oak tree and we go out there and we sign the documents. We'll provide the witnesses, we'll provide the notary, everybody's wearing face masks. And we try to keep it as safe as possible. And you know, when we're done, here's our tool of the trade, right? Our pen. When we're done, we take our pens and everything and we spray them all down and, and doing our best. That I mean, we're not a medical office, we're lawyers. <laughs> so, but uh, with what we understand of what we're supposed to be doing to protect each other and ourselves, we are trying to do that. That is so, it's so important. And that's the number one thing, as you know, uh, we've been working remotely with the Helping Seniors Organization uh, for the same reason. We have our offices up there at the Senior Resource Center of Brevard, uh, co-located with Zon Beachside, but for the same thing. We want to keep everybody safe. So uh, Kim has been able to, to uh, well, actually she's been quite busy, as you would imagine, uh, mm -hmm. working with folks calling in on that Senior Information Helpline. I'm going to give that number, and then we're going to quickly move into uh, estate planning. But the Helping Seniors Senior Information Helpline is 321-473-7770. 321-473-7770. It's a great number to jot down, keep on your pad if you missed anything that we're talking about this. And folks, if, if I wanted to say this. Uh, Ruth has shared a lot of excellent information also uh, on the Helping Seniors television programs. And I want to encourage you uh, to, they're all archived. They're on the Helping Seniors YouTube channel. Uh, you can actually find them on our Facebook page at Helping Seniors of Brevard. Uh, of course, you can get them through our Helping Seniors website at Helping Seniors of Brevard.org. And uh, there's a number of great programs that will be a good supplement to what we're going to cover just now. And the question is really about estate planning. And everybody says, oh, I'll get to all this stuff, I'm sure, once COVID is through. But we, <laughs> but actually, if you think about it, COVID is probably another reason to try to try to think ahead and get all these things uh, organized. So what is estate planning? How would you uh, encapsulate that and give us a quick, you know, I, I, so I say, well, am I really rich enough to even think of an estate? You know, we think, you know, Beverly Hills and movie stars, right? <laughs> Right. Well, estate planning is a couple of things. Um, most people, when they think about what estate planning is, they're thinking it's about how I divvy up my assets after I pass away. And yes, that is a definitely a big part of what estate planning is. It's, it's a plan for how are you going to take care of your loved ones? How are you going to take care of maybe your children or your spouse? or maybe you might wanna be uh, taking care of your favorite charities. So yeah, that's part of estate planning, but also part of estate planning is thinking about yourself and what would happen and who would take care of you if something were to happen to you where you would lose capacity or the ability to take care of yourself. So um, one of the very important components about estate planning is planning for incapacity because as we know, more and more of us are developing dementia. I don't know what the numbers are, one in three, something like that is what I hear. But if you live long enough, if you're lucky to live long enough, mm -hmm. uh, you have a very good chance of having some kind of dementia mm -hmm. or other kind of incapacity issues. Mm -hmm. So estate planning is about who's going to pay your bills, who's going to buy you ice cream, who's going to take care of you if you can't do it for yourself. So that's also a really important component. And as far as Beverly Hills and movie stars, um, even, even the most humble of us, uh, financially speaking, could use at least a basic set of documents because like I said, it's not about just giving away your assets at the end of your life. It's also about taking care of you. Mm -hmm. and you are important and we want to make sure you are taken care of and if you don't plan accordingly and you lose capacity you may end up becoming a ward of the state through a guardianship action and that just if we can avoid guardianship we need to do what we can and it's not expensive it's way less expensive than it is to deal with a guardianship you know, that was something I was going to say, because you, you really covered the question, who who needs to plan their estate? But I was going to say, the one little piece that I've picked up as I've heard you talk about this is that uh, this is where an ounce of prevention could be worth a pound of cure, because then you've got everything set up. 
the right way, as opposed to it getting very expensive, very complex, very uh, <clears throat> involved with court systems and all if you, if you ended up yeah. having to deal with a guardianship situation. And not to mention, uh, in addition to all of that, Carrie, another really good reason to have a plan in place and writing is in the event you have family that may love you so much that they're all going to fight over you. Yeah. You know, and, and that's a lot of times that is what brings us into a guardianship situation as well, because there's not a proper plan in place. And so a, a guardianship action gets filed and then all five of the kids or all six of the kids or even just two kids mm -hmm. uh, could end up fighting over you, spend a lot of money in attorney's fees. And guess who pays for all that at the end of the day? Right. You will from your estate, from your estate as you are um, your living estate, which you own as your living, or at the end of the day when you pass away. But the, all the attorney's fees, I mean, it's not guaranteed to come out that way, but a lot of times the attorney's fees are all paid by the person who is subject to the ward. Mm. And even the least expensive guardianships are five to $10,000 every day of the week every day of the week and then if you add in litigation you're we're talking tens of thousands of dollars or more i've actually been involved in guardianships where the attorney's fees alone were in excess of a hundred grand wow wow yeah and, and yeah. When you, yeah when you contrast that with the case of sitting down and doing a little bit of advanced planning that mm -hmm. can't be anywhere near those kind of numbers can it nowhere near and you know, and not everybody needs a complicated setup. You don't need to have, not everybody needs to have um, trust and all, all, you know, complicated things or, you know, and even if you do decide, you know, maybe a trust is the right way to go and we'll go into all that, but it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be done very simply and it doesn't have to be expensive. Most people aren't spending near that kind of money, right. not anywhere near it. And it's, it's a big like you said, an ounce of prevention, it's worth more than a pound of cure sometimes. Right. And you would think it would probably put some peace of mind for everybody, you know, not only uh, yourself as the person uh, uh, working on the estate planning documents, but also for the family because they know everything has been already organized and set up. So I guess a, a question that we wrote down here was, um, just in kind of a summary, the different types of documents that, that are part of, of, of what you would call estate planning. Mm -hmm. So when, uh, when I sit down, or not anymore do I sit down with folks, <laughs> but I sit down on the phone and, and, and talk with them on the phone, uh, but I'll, I'll ask them about, you know, what is your goals, what do you, what do you, what's important to you um, when it comes to at the end of your life, what's important for themselves, for their own care, what's important for who they want to care for after they've passed, you know, is there any special circumstances, uh, do you have a disabled child, do you have an, a spouse that you want to make sure you're providing for, and um, then we'll also talk about the different assets that they have to decide what is the best way to deal with that asset right. um, for just whatever their goal is. And we just try to make sure that we set up a plan that reaches that goal, at least, you know, either as best as we can or perfectly sometimes. Um, but there's a variety of documents that we may use as part of that plan. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that is tossed about a lot is the revocable living trust. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's several different types of trusts that go into a possible estate plan. There's two main trusts that people deal with. Uh, one is a revocable trust and one is a irrevocable trust. So just depending on what your goals are, would depend on what type of trust is right for you. But mm -hmm. most people who have real estate, like maybe a homestead and they want to avoid probate, um, or if they have a complicated situation where maybe they have a disabled child or disabled spouse or some other special circumstance, a trust might be the best way to leave assets to the next generation or to your beneficiaries uh, because a trust can be used to not only um, avoid probate, it can be a very powerful tool for caring for who is left behind. Um, it gives a lot of flexibility to the person you um, 
put in charge with that person is called a trustee. Um, that person, um, you definitely want to make sure they're honest and ethical and, and are going to follow your wishes. Um, but that person can have a lot of flex flexibility with taking care of who is important to you after you're gone. And a trust can be used to avoid probate, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a money saver and a time saver. Um, and a trust can also be used, and this is important too, for your own protection while you're alive in the event that you lose capacity. So whatever assets end up going into the trust, and generally uh, for most people that's going to be their home and maybe a bank account or two, um, but whatever assets are held by the trust, the person that you name as your trustee, and you have all the control over that, um, over who gets to be in charge, that person uh, can then take care of and manage those assets without having to go through a guardianship. Mm -hmm. So it's also a guardianship avoiding tool. So a trust is a real super flexible document. Mm -hmm. So whether it's an irrevocable trust, which is often used for Medicaid planning or asset protection, um, or a living uh, trust, a revocable trust, which is one that you can change easily, you can amend it, you can make changes. Irrevocable trust, not so easy to change. Right. So you gotta be really careful if you decide that's the way you wanna go. Um, so, but either one of those can be used for um, avoiding probate, uh, transferring assets without having to go through the court system. Um, it allows you to appoint someone to be in charge of your assets in the event of incapacity. Uh, but of course, you have to be careful about which one you choose. And, and that's where the consultation comes in, right? I, that's what I was going to say is it, this what you're really impressing upon me is the fact that there's there are so many dimensions to this. This is really why you need to to sit down and mm -hmm. and and be able to go over step by step what your particular needs are with somebody that really understands the whole process like yourself. Right. And I guess, I guess that kind of leads me into a, a topic I wanted to touch on. You know, uh, we get so many calls, Ruth, from people who are moving in uh, from out of state. They, they come from, you know, some state, maybe it's up north, maybe it's from out west, and they're, they're coming to Florida, and they're bringing documents that they had prepared in another state. Right. Well, oftentimes, it could be somebody went by an office supply store and picked up a form, and they think they're covered. And I want you to talk a little bit about, uh, and maybe some things have changed legislatively, even if you've been in Florida all along, but you had documents put together years ago. How does all that affect uh, this kind of a discussion? Oh boy, that's that's a huge, huge area. All right, that you just mentioned all in one little thing. <laughs> all right. So out of state folks, I highly, highly recommend, even if they have a very good estate plan uh, for what was done for them and from a different state, mm -hmm. I highly recommend them meeting with a, an attorney that practices regularly right. in estate planning or elder law uh, to have those documents reviewed to make sure that they're going to properly protect them and take care of them in Florida. Um, we um, The different states are required by the United States Constitution to recognize and honor uh, legal documents from other states. But the problem is sometimes those legal documents don't meet all the requirements for Florida or um, those legal documents um, are insufficient. Okay. So you, you definitely want to have those looked at. So in uh, in Florida in particular, one thing that comes to mind to me is when I have a person from out of state move in and say they're elderly and they suddenly need to have Medicaid planning done because there's a possibility or a likelihood that they may need to go into a long-term care facility and they don't have the money or a long-term care policy to take care of that bill for them. And as you know, that can be extra you know, just astronomical. Uh, $10,000 a month for a nursing home is not unusual. Yeah. Um, and that, I don't know about you, but that would deplete my assets pretty darn quick. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times people need Medicaid to be able to pay for that. Because uh, Medicare doesn't, I don't know if you knew that, Medicare does not pay for nursing home care. It only pays for rehab and that's for a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. And most healthcare insurances do not pay for long-term care.
Right. So a lot of times people have to turn to Medicaid and I get this out of state person with their out of state power of attorney and the elderly person usually at this point has already lost capacity and can't update documents um, legally. Mm -hmm. And I have this child who is trying to help their mom or their dad uh, with their out of state power of attorney and they bring it to me and I don't see the language that I need to see that allows them to be able to do Medicaid planning. And, um, and then it's kind of touch and go on whether or not the Department of Children and Families, which handles Medicaid, whether or not their legal department is going to let us use that power of attorney. So if you move to Florida, one of the first things, I know it doesn't sound like it should be top on your list of priorities, but one of the first things you should do is have that looked at. Yeah. Uh, another problem, and it kind of hand in hand, is those documents you get from paralegals those documents you get from the inter from the internet yeah. or the um, the office supply stores, um, and I hate to even say it, but even from attorneys that don't practice in elder law or estate planning will sometimes give documents that are not good. Right. Um, they may not have the language that's needed to be able to do all that is required to protect you in the event that you lose capacity. And unfortunately, a lot of times it's not even discovered that your documents are insufficient until it's too late for you to draft new documents because you've lost capacity. Yeah. So, and then if that becomes a situation, then a lot of times um, we have to file for guardianship and then we have to ask the court for permission to do Medicaid planning for you. And now we just, we just spent a lot of money you know, because it's, not, like it's said, time and money, isn't it? It's really both because and time, yeah. All these things, they, and usually, if you're at that point, is because because we didn't do a good job of planning. Now it's crisis mode, which, mm -hmm. which does two things. There's the, just the delay while you're trying to sort everything out and get it put together, but then there's also the cost factor because you mm -hmm. know that's that time is money thing. So I, yeah, I, and time it, it can be very crucial. And right now with the COVID. Yeah. It, if you're in a nursing home or another type of facility, it is really hard for us to get documents signed because we can't go in. We can't talk to you, but it's not impossible. We have uh, actually been able to get documents signed. And what we've usually done is we, we coordinate with the nursing home or the facility to bring that person to the window and they stand, the, somebody helps them inside with a phone and we talk to them on the outside with the phone and we have the notary outside and they hold their ID up to the window and it's, we can do it. So it's not impossible, but the COVID has made things a lot more difficult, but we, you know, we've kind of figured out ways to work around it, you know, uh, that <laughs> necessity is the mother of invention, but all of this discussion that we've been having and, and thank you for sharing all of this, all of this really points out the, the, real need to get ahead of this curve. And so uh, kind of the last thing I want to just ask you to quickly let us know, you, you touched on it before we got into the discussion about estate planning, but now uh, hopefully uh, if you're watching this, you've understood why it really behooves you to take uh, another step and, and, and start to figure this out. And again, I wanted to say, how, how would somebody who's viewing this, what would be the next step you would suggest? Would it be to attend one of your seminars online or what would, what would, you, what would you think would be a good, good, uh, good thought for somebody on that? So depending on the type of person that they are, you know, some people, uh, they want to learn a lot and they want to get a lot of information. They want to do a lot of research. So if that's the type of person that you are, then uh, do do go ahead and watch one of the seminars on estate planning. I really get deeply into the details of what different documents are and what they're for. Or um, you can just cut right to the chase, call and get a free consultation. We'll sit down, um, talk to you over the phone or over the video conferencing and go over your particular situation. Um, because the videos are kind of like a big overview, you know, 10,000 foot overview of what estate planning is, but it, we don't know what you need until we actually talk to you and figure out what you, your goals are and um, what your particular situation is. So, and the consultation's free. So, and there's no obligation. So to me, it just makes a lot of sense, but 
Carrie, before we move on, you did briefly uh, ask me about docs. I got all yeah. hung up on trusts. <laughs> you know, I tend to do that. I apologize. <laughs> but um, I wanted to make sure uh, that everyone knew there was uh, other documents that are really important. Everyone's uh -huh. heard of the last will and testament, of course, and everyone's pretty familiar with what that does. Um, but one of the very most important documents, uh, besides the free documents that you can get on my website, is uh, the other very important document that everybody over the age of 18 should have, and it needs to be a powerful, good one, is a durable power of attorney. I cannot stress that enough. A durable power of attorney can help you avoid guardianship. A durable power of attorney um, is just one of the most powerful documents a person can have. And um, especially during the COVID, I. I, I'm not a fear monger, but I've had so many people call me right now. A lot of teachers are calling me to get documents in place. Sure. Uh, and I want to make sure that everyone uh, that hires me gets the full package of what they need to be as protected as possible. But I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure you have a durable power of attorney and don't download a form from the internet because I can almost guarantee you it's not going to have everything in it that you need. Um, and the false sense of security is probably one of the most dangerous things you can have. Yeah. Such, uh, such good, good thoughts on, on all of that and good, uh, good to keep in mind. So uh, let's, let's kind of, uh, 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 make sure that we leave people with the phone number one more time uh, to get a hold of, 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 of you at the office and they can set up an appointment to have that free consultation uh, or they want more information about uh, upcoming seminars or things mm -hmm. that, that you may be offering. So I want to give one more time the phone number and also your website. Okay, so the website is www.roadslaw.com pa.com that's r h o d e s l a w p a.com you can go on there and get all the old uh, webinars that we've done previously recorded you can also sign up for the upcoming ones there and you can get those free documents that i talked about good um, and if you want a consultation huh? <laughs> yeah carrie you can get with those as well <laughs> if you need them uh, if you want to talk to someone about your particular estate plan, we do it for free and we're happy to do it. And our telephone number at our office is 321-610-4542. That's 321-610-4542. Well, I really appreciate your time, Carrie. And, you know, it's been fun as always. <laughs> So, so important and so valuable. The, you know, Joe Steckler, our president and founder, has always talked about uh, the information that's necessary to create a successful aging plan. And boy, have we covered a lot of ground with that today. So I'm really appreciative of you taking the time to join us. And uh, so thank you again, Ruth Rhodes of Rhodes Law, PA, uh, longtime friend of Helping Seniors, uh, serves uh, on the board of directors of Helping Seniors, busy uh, with the business of helping seniors in Brevard County. Thank you again for all you do. And thank you viewer for tuning in. Make sure you check out helpingseniorsupdates.com where you can get uh, good contact. We'll make sure all the website links and things that uh, Ruth was talking about today are listed there as well. And thank you again, Ruth. And, thank you, Carrie. Thank you, we'll, everyone. And we'll see you again soon on yeah. behalf of uh, Joe and uh, Kim and the whole Helping Seniors team. Hope you have a good have a good afternoon, and then we'll see you on Friday for Helping Seniors Updates. Stay safe. <laughs>